Thanks to Brilliant for supporting this episode of SciShow. Go to brilliant.org slash scishow to learn how you can take your STEM skills to the next level. It was a mystery that went unsolved for more than 25 years. Across the southeastern United States, bald eagles were dying. This time, it wasn't DDT, but no one knew what it was. Finally, in March of 2021, researchers announced that they had found the killer, a toxin from a recently discovered species of bacteria. And the scientists hope that this knowledge can better protect eagles and the ecosystems they depend on. But how these scientists uncovered this mystery is better than any murder TV show that you've ever seen. So get ready for some twists and turns. It all begins in 1994 near a reservoir in Arkansas called DeGray Lake. Soon after the eagles had arrived to spend the winter, they started turning up dead. Two years later, it happened again. This time, another overwintering species was affected as well. Some duck-like birds called coots, a prey item of eagles, by the way, were having trouble swimming and flying. In necropsies, the non-human version of an autopsy, the bodies of the affected birds looked mostly healthy, but in their brains, the white matter looked spongy. The axons, the skinny tubes that carry messages between brain cells, were swollen and their fatty myelin wrappers were riddled with microscopic fluid-filled bubbles. Researchers ruled out some possibilities like prions, or misfolded proteins, and viruses. And by 1998, they classified it as a new brain disease, avian vacuolar myelinopathy, or AVM. No one had ever seen anything like this in wild birds, but it did look a lot like the damage in mammals from certain neurotoxins. Like from the rat poison bromethylin. Bromethylin works by blocking mitochondria from producing energy in the form of ATP. Neurons use a lot of ATP to set up their signals, and when this breaks down, they sort of fall apart. Trouble was, testing for these and other toxins turned up nothing. Meanwhile, the problem was growing. AVM began showing up across the southeastern U.S. Over eight winters, it killed at least 100 bald eagles and thousands of coots, and it sickened members of several other bird species. There was growing evidence that the cause was a natural toxin, not a chemical that humans had dumped into the environment. But despite years of trying, researchers could not identify it. Then, in 2005, we have our first breakthrough. Scientists linked the poisonings to artificial bodies of water where a certain invasive weed was growing, and where a certain type of cyanobacteria was growing on that weed. The nuisance weed is called hydrilla, or water thyme, and these lakes had a lot of it. Now, hydrilla also grew in similar lakes without these cyanobacteria. And even though the same types of birds spent time there, they were not getting sick. So all signs were pointing to the bacteria. No one had seen this species before, but others like it are notorious for making potent toxins in including ones that affect the brain. You may have heard about toxic algal blooms that poison wildlife and close beaches. Well, that is actually cyanobacteria, sometimes called blue-green algae, and they can be nasty. Researchers suspected these new cyanobacteria were making a toxin that accumulated as it moved up the food chain. This is sort of like what happens with other toxins like mercury or DDT, the pesticide infamous for thinning bird eggshells. Like water birds eat the weeds, then eagles eat the water birds, especially the sick ones because they're easy to catch. Since eagles are at the top of the food chain, they likely get the highest dose of toxin, which may have made AVM especially deadly for them. But it affected other critters in the lakes, too, like snails, tadpoles, fish, and turtles. Problem was, when researchers grew the cyanobacteria in the lab, itself turns out no easy task, they didn't make any toxin. So even though there was all this evidence that they were the killer, it was all circumstantial evidence. Now, to be clear, it's not that the scientists were missing something. The bacteria seem to produce very low levels of the toxin most of the time, and they need a secret ingredient to do it. The final clue fell into place when researchers used a super fancy tool called Atmospheric Pressure Matrix Assisted Laser Desorption Ionization Mass Spectrometry Imaging is what it was called. What is it? Well, it uses a laser to vaporize the molecules on the surface of an object. In this case, the objects in question were bacteria-covered weeds gathered from the wild. Then it weighs and analyzes the molecules. What stood out was a molecule with five bromine atoms, sort of like the ones on bromethylin, the rat poison. Now, bromine isn't all that plentiful in living things, and it is not something you would necessarily think to add to culture medium if you were trying to grow cyanobacteria in a lab. But 
when researchers fed the bacteria some bromine in the form of potassium bromide, they made the toxin. They named it AETX, short for atoxinotoxin, which means poison that kills the eagle in Greek. Though, as it turns out, it can kill plenty of other animals, too. And with that, the mystery was solved. They also made some important connections to what was happening in the reservoirs. Like, for example, when bacteria are stressed, they crank out a hundred times more toxin, and they get stressed by things like water temperatures dropping and the water being stirred up. Researchers think those same conditions precede bird poisonings. Plus, it turns out hydrilla accumulates bromine from the environment, so the cyanobacteria probably suck bromine out of the weed. And now we know we should probably stop using a certain and bromine-containing herbicide to try and control the hydrilla, because it could be feeding bromine straight to the bacteria. We can also monitor bromine in the lakes and look for ways to make it less available to the cyanobacteria. And finally, we can look for better ways to combat hydrilla, the invasive weed, and the toxic bacteria. Meanwhile, by studying how the toxin works, we might even be able to find a treatment. Solving this mystery should help us protect not only bald eagles, but these entire freshwater ecosystems and the people living near them. Decades of detective work have finally paid off. Scientists have to be comfortable with the unknown. They tackle it all the time. And Brilliant's course Knowledge and Uncertainty can teach you not just how researchers understand uncertainty, but also how you can deal with it in your own life. Brilliant is an online learning platform that offers tons of interactive courses in science, math, engineering, and computer science, all designed by top educators. If you'd like to give them a try, you can check out brilliant.org scishow to sign up and save 20% off an annual premium subscription.